Hello. Thank you very much for being here. This is a presentation of I'm Eleni Manoli from the European Commission. This is a presentation on nature-based solutions for disaster risk reduction and the agenda that we are developing for research and innovation for such solutions that can alleviate risks from diverse hazards. So what is the challenge? Here there are two photos, illustrative photos to our view, of uh, recent events in Europe. The floods in Copenhagen in, 2007, in 2018 and there's some tied in uh, the port of Bremen. And, and uh, nature-based solutions that can address such challenges, we define them as actions that are inspired, supported, or copied from nature, and that can be energy and resource efficient at the same time and help us achieve multiple goals and multiple benefits, and can be a, a potentially cost-effective response to societal challenges that we are facing today. A few examples from across Europe of where such responses to mitigate disaster risks have already been applied. An example from a small city in Germany, the city of Arnsberg. This is a city of 75,000 inhabitants, more or less, and was flooded in 2007 by small streams uh, that were flowing across the city. The solution that was chosen and was implemented by the local authorities in collaboration with the citizens was to renature the streams in the city and give more room uh, for the waters to flow. This resulted in substantial co-benefits. One of them was also enhanced recreational value and revenue from tourism activities within the city. A second example, national more or less, is the Room for the River project that has been implemented in the Netherlands. Uh, there, the, uh, the issue is the mitigation of uh, flood risks for the population and uh, a uh, study done by the Dutch Ministry revealed that the cost of expanding traditional flood protecting infrastructure engineering solutions was pretty high. So they went towards more green solutions for the restoration of floodplains and the introduction of green elements. Another example, but from landslides this time, protective forests in the Alps. Here we see two photos, one from 1945 and the next one is the same slope from 2007. The solution to mitigate avalanche and landslide risk was to invest in the targeted afforestation of hill slopes. And this resulted from benefits for Switzerland only when this approach is applied between 1.5 and 2.5 billion euro per year. So there is a question whether nature, such nature-based solutions, whether investing in ecosystem-based approaches is indeed uh, cost effective. Traditionally, engineering solutions are perceived to be, have a very strong evidence base and can be more effective in reducing the impact of hazards. Nature based solutions, on the other side, are more affordable and with many additional benefits, but often not a, they are perceived as not as effective as other options. And the, uh, but one must admit that the evidence base is weak. There is a lot of uncertainty on what concerns the knowledge that we have about the performance of these options. And uh, so, on the other side, if we look at the multiple and the diverse benefits that such solutions may have, we see that nature-based solutions can indeed make a difference. We're talking about enhancement of natural capital, benefits for climate change mitigation as well, water and soil protection. We see this in ma many examples across Europe and across the world, that such solutions can offer water and soil protection. They offer more sustainable, they offer the opportunity for a more sustainable livelihood and also create, um, <clears throat> so we have a lot of experiences, both from Europe and worldwide, where such solutions have indeed been deployed, but these are more or less isolated cases. With, there are certain barriers to full deployment, mainly that awareness among decision makers remains and is limited, and there is a very specific way of doing things and investing in engineering solutions, mainly because the evidence base is considerably stronger. So, recognizing that there is need for tools and standards to engineer more nature-based solutions and offer a base which makes them comparable to traditional engineering approaches such as dikes. 
We are planning for the future to develop an EU research and innovation policy agenda for nature-based solutions. What does it mean? What do we want to achieve? First, to widen the portfolio of solutions available to decision makers beyond the traditional approach. And also foster social innovation because nature-based solutions can only work when all stakeholders, including the citizens, are also involved in their design and their implementation and providing what we call systemic, scalable, and integrated solutions, both at landscapes, watersheds, river basins, coasts, but also at cities, and creating investment and market opportunities. Our main instrument to do that will be the Horizon 2020, which is the EU framework program for research and innovation, which is also an inter open to international cooperation. The idea will be to start from proof of concepts, demonstration initiatives to test alternative solutions through in a more systematic way so that, so that we can also enlarge the evidence base that already exists and to seek public and private sector engagement to fully upscale such solutions. So, the means to achieve this will be First of all, establish a wide dialogue platform for diverse stakeholders within and beyond uh, the European Union and to map existing initiatives in Europe and internationally, to set up large-scale demonstration projects where we can test such solutions and launch and test also new means of collaboration, not relying only on public funding and public investment, but also on private actor initiatives as such solutions can also create economic benefits for other actors besides the public sector. So here are a few links where you can find out more. And since I finished quite early, if there are any questions from the audience. No? Inside. Oh, inside? Yes, oh. yes. Sorry, I just have a question. Um, I'm Ella from AmeriCares. Um, so with regard to the development of nature-based solutions, can you describe the role of traditional engineering companies like Arup and EDAW and others who do a lot of work with rainwater capture and that sort of thing and where they fit into this kind of um, European Commission-led initiative? Okay, uh, we're talking about EU research and innovation. And we do recognize the role that uh, private companies and private actors and private investors actually do play because they are the way to bring such solutions and make them also more systemic. The public sector typically designs public infrastructure works, but it's also the engineering companies who come up also with innovative ideas and can participate as well as part of this uh, initiative. And actually, through an expert group that we set up to define research priorities for nature-based solutions, we had also private companies like Arup being involved so that they can bring in their experience. Thank you. Anyone else? No. Thank you. Okay. Um, yes, I have a question because when you talk about evidence-based and arguments for nature-based solutions, because there's a number of scenario modeling mm -hmm. that you can do by looking at catchment scale modeling, um, what is the impact of afforestation, what would be the impact of, expandi of extending the floodplains, for example. When you mean evidence, you mean concrete projects where this will then be put in place, uh, like analog we modeling? Mean, um, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, what we mean exactly is, first of all, concrete projects, but a more systematic documentation of the different benefits that such solutions can offer. Not only in terms of reducing risks, but also in terms of example for, of enhancing biodiversity, on creating economic value for different sectors where they, their, such solutions are implemented. Uh, one example from uh, the first small city in Germany that I mentioned, uh, where I, we had an interview with a local decision maker. They said, in fact, that they saw that after they had implemented such solutions, revenue for the city increased because they may, had much, many more tourists. But on the other side, they could not provide any figures about this. So this such evidence usually tends, let's say, to 
uh, influence decision making because you have more evidence on cost effectiveness and so on versus traditional ways of doing things, traditional engineering solutions. Thank you. If there is someone else. Thank you.